For this lesson, we'll be focusing on microcontrollers. Now, microcontrollers perform control activities as embedded computers in a system. Typical microcontrollers may need to withstand abnormal environments and contain an input-output capability to perform simple tasks, unlike your conventional uh, CPUs or computers at home. Some of these microcontrollers you may see in some of your household devices, such as alarm clocks, remote controls, uh, your microwave, your stove, and so on. Microcontrollers are not intended to perform heavy amounts of data processing or calculations like microprocessors. However, in this lesson, you will see overlap between the two. Now to give you a big picture, we're going to break down the microcontroller based on its elements, which consist of its microprocessor or its CPU, the memory devices inside, the RAM, the ROM, and so on, and its input-output interface. So we're going to jump right into the most complex element of the microcontroller, which is your microprocessor. Now we're not going to go very in-depth on this particular element, we're just going to touch base on it just to give you an overview of the microcontroller itself. Microcontrollers are a digital integrated circuit that can be programmed with a series of instructions to perform various operations of data. Basically, it fetches each program instruction from memory and then executes this instruction based on the commands received. This pattern will continue until all the instructions of the specific program have been executed. So when you think of microprocessors, that's considered to be the brain of the microcontroller. Next, we have memory devices. Now, we went over this in a little more detail in the memory devices video. However, we're just going to touch base on it here, just that way you get a refresher. Memory, or address memory, is a system entity for storing binary code for instructions and data. So all those instructions the microprocessor is computing and sending, the memory actually holds these instructions and data. For ROM, it's used to hold small amounts of repetitive instructions or data and cannot be rewritten like RAM does. Common applications for ROM would be your, your firmware for, uh, for your microprocessor. Your RAM holds a temporary data while the microprocessor performs instructions calculations. So think of RAM as your notepad. The last element of the microcontroller is your input-output interface, also known as your device interface. Your device interface controls the operation of your peripheral device according to the commands from the processor. It also converts computer data into various formats required by the device and vice versa. So some of these output interfaces may consist of logic gates, buffers, flip-flops, digital analog converters, analog to digital converters. So like if you have a peripheral device like a sensor, it may take your sensor, your analog reading, and convert it to a digital format so your processor can calculate or send the instructions where it needs to. Now, if you don't know what a peripheral device is, that is considered to be a sensor, uh, any terminals, communication devices, displays, any basically external device to your microcontroller. Now, with the elements we just went over, now we need to understand how they communicate with each other. The key entities of a microcontroller is how to understand the local buses. The local buses would consist of your data bus, address bus, and control bus. Your data bus transmits raw machine data, your binary numbers, or your memory in that case. Your address bus transmits the register associated with that data, and your control bus actually transmits your control signals to and from those devices. So it actually can turn off or on any devices that you wanna to talk to. So for the last slide, I probably saved the most important information for last, your construction and format of the microcontroller. Now in the previous slide, we talked about the three different buses, your data bus, address bus, and control bus. Now we need to understand how they're formatted on paper. Now your buses are a set of parallel lines and can be indicated by a single heavy line with a slash and the number of separate lines in that set. So in the illustration, we have a red, blue, and green bus. Your red bus, has a slash and then a 16. That tells you there are 16 parallel lines. Eight, there's a slash with the blue there. There's eight parallel lines. And then with the green, we have three. Now, typically the amount of parallel lines display the amount of bits for the associated bus. And it's usually indicated by what you see below. So we have a 16, for red, we have 16 slash. That means there's 16 bits. So you have an A0 through A15. Now A0 would be your least significant bit. A15 may be your most significant bit. Now, you may see your most significant bit first or your least significant bit first, but be aware these are the two formats you may commonly see. And also, you'll see these particular formats right next to the devices. So in the RAM we have to the right, they have a data of 8 bits, which is D of 7 through D of 0, and then your address, 
a of 15 through a of 0. Now also be aware, not all devices will use all the lines on the bus. Some devices will use a specific bits of that bus. And most address registers and data bits are typically indicated in a hexadecimal format. All right, let's jump into an easy one. A 12-bit address bus supports how many memory addresses? All right, as we said in the PowerPoint, a bus is gonna be a bold line with a slash through it and then the amount of parallel lines above it. And we said sometimes the parallel lines indicates how many bits there are. So we have 12 bits on this address bus. Now, if you ever wanna find the amount of bits, you just do your simple math like you'd learn in some of your binary classes. So for example, if we have two to the n, number of bits is n equals the amount of addresses you can have. So we have two to the 12 equals, and you can plug and chug this in your calculator, and it'll give you an answer of 4,096 addresses. So if you had a RAM or ROM and they had zero to 4,096, you could pick which register you would like based on that address. Since most of these numbers are in hexadecimal format, it'd probably be best to actually convert this to hexadecimal format. So we know this is base 10. Well, using your calculator, you can convert your 4,096 base 10 to a base 16. Type in 4,096 base 10 and go to hexadecimal and it would give you 1,000 even for hexadecimal format. So that right there is going to be your final answer. We had to start off with an easy one. All right, let's go to the next example. Now for this example, we got a little bit more illustration here. We're going to determine the data being fetched based on the parameters. So we have a microcontroller, a demultiplexer, dynamic RAM, static RAM, and electrical programmable ROM. So we have three memory devices and we'll want to know what data is being fetched based on the parameters. Well, we have parameters right here. We have an address of 3D, base 16. We want to know data. And we have our control of also 3D, base 16. And then we also have our raw data on to the right for each one of these devices. First, we're going to look at our control. Our control is 3D. And that's, again, hexadecimal. And then it goes down through this bus. And then it goes down to these data selects for this demultiplexer. The problem is it doesn't use all eight bits of this bus because each bus is an eight parallel line bus. It only uses the least significant bit, zero, all the way to through two. So it only uses the first three. So we're going to have to break down 3D into its binary number. So all we're going to do is pull our calculator and go from 3D, base 16, to binary, which is going to give us a binary number of zero, zero, one, one, and then one, one, zero, one. So if you actually want to break this down to the nibble, this would be considered three. This one would consider D. Now we want to know C0 through C2. Well, this is your least significant bit. So this would be C of zero, C of one, C of two, which means you're only going to be using the binary number of one, zero, one. So that's the address that's going to be used right there, 1, 0, 1. Well, if you convert that to decimal, that you can do either on your calculator or in your head. That one's pretty easy. That's going to give you, let's say, tell you what, I'll put base 2 right there. Base 2, 5. That's base 10. So which means the data is going to go to number 5. Now, for those of you who are not very familiar with multiplexers, demultiplexers, and so on, we do have a combinational circuits video that goes over this and a few example problems. All right, so it looks like we're going to be sending a ground from this data point to output five. So we already know we're going to be activating or putting a low right here on number five, which means for this particular chip select, this is going to be a zero or low. Okay, now we want to also determine our address. So address is 3D. So it's going to be going down to the SRAM or static RAM. And it's 3D. So this one's going to be 3D. 
and we already activated this particular RAM chip because chip select is low, which means anytime you have a dash over chip select, it must be a low to activate. So we're looking for this particular static RAM. We're looking for address 3D. Well, 3D is right there. Now, anytime these are not activated, these are in limbo. They're not high, they're not low. They're basically just disconnected. So these act as disconnects anytime you're doing these problems. So which means 3D is this particular address register right there, and that would be your raw data. So the data it would be fetching would be 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, which is right here. So that's what your microcontroller would be fetching when inputting this address and control parameter. Let's do one more problem. All right, for our last example, I have a few actual extra devices in here that's a little bit out of the ordinary, just to mix things up. So for this one, what is the address instruction required to receive information from the 4 to 20 milliamp detector? So we want to know what address instruction do we need to receive information from this guy right here. And that looks like a temperature probe. So we have a decoder, digital analog converter, 7 segment decoder, and then we have our 4 to 20 milliamp detector. So we have some output devices and some input devices. So we'd have to know what address instruction was required to activate the 4 to 20 milliamp detector. Well, we have our microcontroller with an address bus and data bus. That data bus goes to all four components, and then our address bus is coming down to a decoder. This is not very uncommon. You may see this sometimes in some of your books. And it looks like you have an 8 parallel line or 8 bit data bus, and it's going to a 4 input decoder. And it only looks like it's using A7 through A4 of that data bus for this decoder. So it's not even using the first four of your data bus, it's using their last four. Okay, so it's a little bit different. So let's look at this. So we have your stoplight decoder, which is set to pin one, your digital analog converter set to pin four, your seven segment decoder, pin seven, and then it looks like pin 10 is your four to 20 milliamp detector. So we wanna know what's gonna activate this pin right here. Based on the video of combinational circuits, we know a decoder decodes whatever binary input you have and activates a single output node. So we want a, so this is decimal 10 and we want a input of a binary number of 10. So binary number of 10, which I'll, I'll tell you what I'll put over here. So 10 base 10 equals a binary number and you can put this in calculator or do it off the top of your head equals a binary number of 10, 10. So we're going to need an input of 10, 10 to activate that one node right there. So this would be your least significant bit, which is zero. And then your next one and your next one. So that would be 10, 10. So it looks like this address bus is using your most significant bit side to the first four. So which means it's going to be A7, A6, A5, please excuse my handwriting. A4, A3, A2, A1, and then A0. And we only care about these guys right here. For A3, A2, A1, and A0, we don't care. And we want to input a binary number of 10, 10, which means that's going to be 10, 10. Most significant bit, least significant bit for the sake of this decoder. So we have don't cares for A3 through A0, and then we have 1010, which is a decimal of 10, or a hexadecimal of A. And then we have don't care after that for those four. Now, just to make it simple on myself, I'm going to go ahead and make that don't care to Fs. So I'm going to say A, F for my address, and that's going to be base 16. Now, it's not always going to necessarily going to be F. Sometimes it may be 0, but I went ahead and did F there just because we don't care. So the, my desired address for this decoder, I'm going to say, is going to be A of F to activate that 4 to 20 milliamp detector. So it's going to be sending information from our temperature probe to our microcontroller. Now I know this one was different. However, it just gets your feet wet with hexadecimal format, as well as converting your binary numbers to hexadecimal. Hopefully this is enough information here to get your feet wet. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know, and I hope you all have a good day.